Before Fort Tryon became a public park, this was a private estate and one of the grandest in all of Upper Manhattan. Built between 1901 and 1905 by Chicago capitalist C.K.G. Billings, over 60 acres made up the grounds of Tryon Hall. It cost $2 million, and how big was it? If you're driving along the Henry Hudson Parkway, you can still see what marked the entrance. This was the gate, and this was the driveway. It wound its way up the hill to the garage at the top. The man had a lot of money, which might explain why he only lived on this grand estate for a few years. In 1909, he sold the property to J.D. Rockefeller Jr. for $1.7 million and moved downtown. Where is the mansion now? Well, there was a fire. CKG Billings had famously installed a private water pumping system. Remember, this is 250 feet above sea level. In 1925, the water pressure failed, however, and thousands and thousands of people watched as fire consumed the entire estate. All that remains now is the driveway and the gatehouse, which you can see from the circle. So from one rich man to another. But Billings was different from Rockefeller. J.D. Rockefeller Jr. is considered one of the greatest philanthropists in American history. He donated land to New York for the United Nations, and he donated land to national parks from Maine to Wyoming and Virginia. He helped restore Versailles, and he created Colonial Williamsburg. And up here, he was instrumental in giving the city this park, the cloisters, and this view. Rockefeller donated this piece of land to the Palisades Interstate Park, preserving the best view from Manhattan. Now to the design of the park. Frederick Law Olmsted designed Central Park, a miserable plot of land that he transformed into a series of landscape paintings. This was designed by his son, Frederick Law Olmsted Jr., and he had the luxury of starting with one of the most scenic locales on the entire island. The park was popular with motorists, for its curving drives and spectacular views, and naturally popular with the pedestrians. The recently arrived Jewish immigrants from Germany could use the garden up in the hills for the tradition of Spazieren, to stroll slowly, appreciating the scenery while engaged in conversation. For decades after World War II, though, the park became overgrown and dangerous. It was difficult to even make out the river. But in the 80s, a massive renovation, which cost well over $20 million, restored the park to its earlier Olmsted Jr. design. The park now features one of the largest heather gardens on the East Coast, with plants and trees and flowers that bloom at different times. And in June, you're greeted by the amazing Kusa Dogwood at the entrance. And be sure to visit the New Leaf Cafe, run by Bette Midler's New York Restoration Project. They have a great brunch, but my favorite time is the early evening, when you can sit here under the trees and enjoy a glass of wine. And then you can come to Linden Terrace and appreciate the view. It's a beautiful place to read and to watch people, especially on the weekends with people in their Sabbath or Sunday best. You can also frequently catch an outdoor play or a wedding or a quinceañera. And then you can come back to the New Leaf Cafe and have another glass of wine. Enjoy the, the breeze. And then you can come to this overlook just east of Linden Terrace and admire the view of the Bronx, realizing that Yankee Stadium is a couple miles south of where we're standing, that this part of the island is actually north of much of the Bronx. And then you can go back to the New Leaf Cafe for another glass of wine. We don't want another glass of wine. Oh, well, oh, I mean, neither. I, you know, I thought maybe. Uh, let's just look at the view of the Bronx. Uh, I don't know, this time of day with the trees and the light and the breeze, you know. Pinot Noir is nice, even a Chardonnay, huh? take a Chardonnay.